more and more automotive parts are being made out of polymers. For them to be electrostatically painted, just as metal body structures, they must be coated by an electrically conductive primer. These primers are applied to the plastic or to the composite body structure prior to further spraying by the base coat. In this video, we will learn how to create such a light colored conductive uh, primer with the use of graphene nanotubes in the most effective way. Hello everyone, my name is Hendrik, technical engineer at Oxyhub. Welcome to the Tubal Products and Solutions channel. In this video, I will present the advantages of our graphene nanotubes over other conductive additives, and we will have a closer look on how to optimize your formulation to get the best performance in the end product. Ordinarily, conductivity in primers is achieved using either carbon black or conductive pigment, like conductive titan dioxide or conductive mica. We propose a new way of conductivity. It's based on single wall carbon nanotubes, which can provide significant benefits in comparison with the other uh, conductive alternatives. To facilitate the introduction and the mixing of our nanotubes inside of your formulation, we developed the Tubal Matrix product line. Tubal Matrix are concentrates based on a polymer carrier and our graphene nanotubes. Depending on your system, we will find a suitable Tubal Matrix product, whether it's for solvent-based acrylic binders or water-based acrylic formulations. Unlike other additives, Tubal Matrix requires only ultra-low dosages to achieve the resistivity levels required by industry standards. This results in uh, many benefits of our nanotubes in comparison with other uh, conductive additives. The first advantage is the range of the possible colors achieved. Even light colors is no problem. Light refractance values of more than 70% can be reached. This is impossible with carbon black. Carbon black will limit the color on either black or dark gray. So it's very difficult or even impossible to get a light colored uh, final coating. The second advantage in comparison with conductive mica or conductive titan dioxide is the cost reduction, as they are used in significantly higher dosages. So now let's go to the processing. Tubal matrix can be used in ready-to-use formulations, but we recommend always to optimize your formulations to get exactly the properties you would like to have. If the primer formulation can be built from scratch, we have some suggestions to make. The first one would be to improve the dilution of our nanotubes in your system using a bed mill with uh, optimum zirconium bed diameters from 1 to 1.7 millimeters and using a specific energy input of at least 30 watt hours per kg. Tubal matrix will be added at the same stage you also add your other fillers and the coloring pigments. Let's proceed to the most difficult part of a contact primer preparation which includes the selection of the optimum components in the formulation. If you have incompatible components, these can uh, lead to different defects in your system. And we have some recommendations on how to avoid the most common issues. The first issue is instability. An unstable system can lead to layering of the different components. The second issue is a bad dispersion or agglomeration, which can lead to bigger particles and an inhomogeneous system. To avoid these issues, Oxel recommends taking a closer look at different dispersing and tixotropic agents. We suggest using copolymer-based acrylic dispersing agents. And for tixotropic agents, um, we suggest using either layered silicates, modified polyurea, or bentonite type agents in low dosages at roughly around 1 weight percent. These materials stabilize the system without affecting the electrical conductivity. For water-based primers, it's important to have a closer look at the deforming agents. As seen from the diagram, deforming agents based on silicon or vinyl copolymer compounds show worse electrical properties in comparison with agents based on plant oils. Even when no visible defects can be observed, an incompatibility between tubal matrix and other components in your system can lead to a decrease of your electrical properties. Based on your surface resistivity, and your color requirements, you need to adjust the tubal matrix level. You can play with the ratio between tubal matrix 
and your coloring pigments to get the benefits of colors and conductivity. If you want to have more information on the optimization of a conductive primer, please have a look at the document optimization guideline in the link below. So now let's make a close summary of our optimization steps. First, we started with choosing the right tubal matrix braid for your system. Then we played with the processing parameters of the bed mill to get the best dilution of our graphene nanotubes in your formulation. Finally, we chose the optimum components in the system, whether it's dispersing agents, tixotropic agents or defoaming agents. And in the last step, we looked at the ratio between tubal matrix and your coloring pigments to get the benefits of color and conductivity. If you are not able to optimize your formulation, but you're going to use tubal matrix in a ready-to-use primer formulation, please have a closer look at the standard processing guideline video. I hope you found this video useful. What technical issues have you faced and were they covered in the video? Please write below and we will be glad to answer you. If you want more information on our tubal product line or on the optimization or the processing of our tubes, please have a look at our website tubal.com or contact a local Oxel representative. Thank you for your time and see you next time.